started. I saw guys live who I idolized. When I first started, when I was living in Washington, D.C., I saw George Carlin perform. This is back in like 1975 or so. I saw Robert Klein. I saw a lot of people perform that I was really into. Martin Mull, I was into. The guy who was probably, I can't say he influenced me because I couldn't do anything what he was doing. But one of the guys I loved the most back in the 70s, before I even got into stand-up comedy, was Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks, he used to do The Tonight Show. I just thought he was so inventive and so different. And he did a ventriloquist puppet. One, one week he came on and said, folks, I'm out. I'm out of material. I have no more jokes left in me. I can't, I can't think of anything funny. Oh, sure, I could come on stage and wear some funny underwear. And he dropped his pants and he had funny underwear on. And he, <laughs> he did this whole thing. And I, I thought he was brilliant. And so I'd, I'd look at a newspaper back in the day. I'd get the morning newspaper, and I'd always look to see what comedians, if any comedians are going to be on, like a Kelly Monteith or somebody like that, be on TV then. You know, I'd look to see if they were going to be on Mike Douglas' show or Merv Griffin's show or that kind of show. I was always looking to see him, and I was always on alert for Albert Brooks. I loved Albert Brooks. And I loved his movies eventually. And I moved out to L.A. I never got a chance to meet him. It'd be sort of like a, a ghost thing. Somebody say, oh, Albert Brooks was in the improv last night, and I'd be not there. And um, I just never met the guy, never saw the guy. And then a few years ago, my son was going to a school here in L.A., and Albert Brooks' daughter was going to the same school. And I saw him around a couple of events, parent-teacher things. See him across the room, I go, can't say anything. Can't say anything. I'm just... I'm worried, you know, I'm worried that he won't know me or he won't, he won't say anything or he'll, he'll be bugged by me coming up and saying something to him. I don't know what to say because I've had this experience before. One of my favorite musical acts was Waylon Jennings. And one time I was on a plane and I happened to be lucky enough to get in the first class that time and Waylon Jennings was sitting behind me. And the whole flight I'm thinking, what am I going to say to Waylon Jennings? I used to listen to your music on acid. I used to love it. You know, what, what can I say to Waylon Jennings? I got to say something significant to Waylon Jennings. When this plan lands, this plan, this plane lands, I got to say something to Waylon Jennings. And when the plane landed and everybody was getting their bags from the top, I turned to him and said, Mr. Jennings, I sure appreciate your music. And he said, son, I appreciate you appreciate my music. <laughs> I gave him a cliche and he gave me a cliche right back. And so I didn't want to say anything to Albert Brooks. So this one day, I'm picking up my son after school, and my son is talking to Albert Brooks' daughter. And there are only people around, are those two kids, and Albert Brooks standing about 10 feet away from me. And I just said, ah, forget it, man. I'm going to go say something to him. And I walk up and said, Albert, you don't know me. He says, I know you. You're Rich Scheider. You're a funny guy. 